No, I know. No, he's obsessed. No, it's a nightmare. I don't know what to do. He won't stop staring at it. I know. I told him he's like the dog. When is it just a car, do you know what I mean? I want to get started. Except it isn't an O37, even though it looks like one. This is the Evo 37, as in the evolution of the Lancho Rally icon. An icon that at the hands of Walter Roll dominated the World Rally Championship in 1983, specifically the infamous band Group B, known for being the most volatile and dangerous period of rally history. And here to pay the ultimate tribute to that car is Chimera Automobili, a boutique car manufacturer that calls this 17th century Italian villa nestled halfway between Turin and the Mediterranean Sea its home. As you enter, you're greeted by smells of espresso and the buzz of busy bees. Solemn carved faces watch over the perfectly manicured gardens. The tranquility of the Villa Camera can only be challenged by the ludicrous creations coming out of it. On paper, the Evo 37 is a driving enthusiast's dream. Manual, mid-engined, rear-wheel drive, the curb weight of a Miata, and the capability to produce 505 horsepower. That gives it a greater power to weight ratio than a Huracan STO. And it only costs more than twice as much as one of those. <laughs> but hey, it's a one of 37 resto mod. And we all really like resto mods. So why do we care about resto mods so much? And how can they possibly be worth 200, 500, 800, a million dollars? It's because they potentially represent the best of both worlds. Because you take an old chassis like a Porsche 964 or an Alfa Romeo GT Junior or a Volvo P1800 even, and you strip them down and you build them back up with a new engine and modern suspension components. And what you end up with, if done correctly, is a car that perfectly captures the essence of the original, but with the performance of a supercar. And maybe Apple CarPlay. Noises. 
And that's because there's a lot going on in here. It takes a lot to make a little 2.1 litre four cylinder engine produce those kind of power numbers. But Camaro have answered that problem by nestling the engine between a supercharger and a turbocharger. The supercharger devotes itself to the first half of the RPM range and then declutches so that we no longer feel the parasitic loss in the high end. And then the turbocharger, which has been spooling and biding its time, comes in and takes us the rest of the way to the red line. The magic of that is that we experience the positives of the supercharger and the turbocharger without any of the negatives. It's got three pedals, the clutch is stiff, but it's not indicative of what's going to be in the final cars. They're going to change that. And the shifter is the same six speed as the one in the R8 and the Gallardo. Except I can see way more linkage here, which for some reason feels pervy and I don't mind. I, I love it. I love a shifter that shows me a little bit more leg, but it does mean you need to be purposeful with the shifts. Oh, it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Just got a smile on my face the whole time. We've been driving the new C63 throughout Europe, which is also a four cylinder, but it's not quite the same. And this is only the first engine lap. This has 350 horsepower right now. It's the road going engine map. There's a second map, which takes you to 450 horsepower, a second state of tune. And then there's the track tune, which is the full 505, which apparently is too leery for the road, <laughs> which I can believe because right now, this is rapid. Supercharger. Turbocharger! Endorphins. It's so mechanical. It's so involving. I'm sweating. I've never been in a car that feels like this that also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. <laughs> hey Siri, play million dollar resto mod turbocharger sounds please on Spotify. <laughs> okay, so yeah, maybe a resto mod is the best of both worlds. Raw, unadulterated driving feel matched with modern creature comforts. And if you have a keen eye, you might have noticed that this green one is a prototype. So the gauges, for example, are just for show. And some of the things like the clutch, which I mentioned, will be different in the production cars. But even still, this one has most of the stuff. I don't know if James mentioned, but it does have air conditioning, which is nice. But we are in Italy on, I think, the longest day of the year. And it's really friggin' hot in here. Either way, I'm just pouring sweat. At least it's not from stress, because this is a weirdly easy car to drive when it comes to the chassis. The ride is excellent. We've got Olin's dampers all the way around the car. Double wishbones in the rear. It's so compliant. And the chassis felt so light. The Evo 37 was happy to dance up the tight Italian switchbacks, all the while filling your ears with pretty much every forced induction sound ever invented. But just as I was getting into a groove with the car, Luca Betti, the rally champion mastermind behind the Evo 37, called us and said that if we wanted, there was an opportunity to drive a fully finished customer car. And even though this would cut my drive with the prototype short, naturally, we didn't hesitate. <laughs> I had the chance because this one felt even more alive. 
Chimera Automobili will set up your Evo 37 exactly how you want, and this customer apparently requested the sharpest steering on earth, because I have never driven a car with a more precise front end than this one. Call it the lightweight, call it the mid-engine setup, call it the modern suspension blended with a vintage chassis, but there was a delicacy to the controls of this car that would make a GT3 RS blush. And speaking of blushing, standing beside this Evo 37, it was our turn. What an unbelievable machine. <laughs> I had the red, I don't know if I can get, between the red and the green. I don't know which I like better, honestly. I like the, I like the green color, but I like the matte finish of this. This is just stunning. Do you know what I like? I like cars that drive the way they look. This definitely drives the way, exactly right. I just, it's just such a crazy experience, isn't it? Like you can literally, when you're coming down from the revs, like if you're breaking into a corner in gear, you can hear the supercharger re-clutch. It's so cool. Like I so actually, much is happening. I, I was too hot and <laughs> yes. I couldn't even it was experience the supercharger so declutching, yeah. No, it's just brilliant. And anyway. It's changed what a four cylinder can be in my head. And yes. I know you wanted your Alfa Romeo Spider to do that for me, but this is done. <laughs> and, and it did, but this has okay. done it again. Yeah, this is an insane level of attention to detail. Like this is carbon fiber, that's carbon fiber. You know, other parts of this car are now fully in carbon fiber when the other one wasn't, right? There's fun stuff going on as well. Like the larger badge on the front, you can opt for the new one, which it looks like this one has, or, yes. or you can take the badge, like the, what our green car did, from the donor car. Love that. Yeah, I, I, I like the old badge. I love the idea of the original badge that the donor car is from, right? So this one is called, so the, the green one was Esmeralda, this one is Victoria. And does it, it say on my door too? Here? Yes, it does. And it's number four. And you can have them, Come on, you could be a strong man. <laughs> if you can handle that clutch, you can handle that door handle. Okay, this clutch has a slightly lighter clutch than the other one. Okay. Both very difficult to quite, that's, uh, The only punishing part about the car I found was the transmission. Yes. Like in, the, stop, the thing that stops you being relaxed. <laughs> yeah, that one and, had a and, copper clutch. It was crazy okay, difficult. And the 37 degree heat. That definitely added. You can choose whatever color you want. Yep. We don't hear, we've never heard that one before, have we? Usually it's like, choose from ad personam. No, or you Ford, could... the Ford, new Ford GT, you could also just imagine a color. And really? They'll, and they'll make it for you. That's yeah. awesome. So this is red Camara matte. That's funny because I don't need, you'd never be able to buy one of these then because you can't decide between four different blue wrap colors. Imagine if you had infinity as your choice. You'd, you'd never be I'd, able I'd to need choose to, a car. I'd need to hear from them, hey, we have one left over. Because they're all sold. That's right. And it's this color and it's all you can get. And, like, if, okay. and, and if it was this, I'd be very happy. Yeah. There's a lot of carbon fiber going on. Like this from, especially from this view. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, no, the, the entire intake plenum for the supercharger there, all carbon fiber, strut bracing carbon fiber, right? All of these parts are just so high quality. You look at everything, it's so like meticulous. It's wonderful. It genuinely is a wonderful thing. The exhausts are a bit strange. You don't like them? The tips, yeah, they look a bit like, uh, like Wally's eyes, or, or, or sort of like a Futurama. It's vintage, man, I love it. It's vintage. Is that, I, yeah, you just get to say vintage. Resto mod, best Resto. of everything. Yeah. All right, inside. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. The prototype didn't have that. No, it did not. Isn't that neat? Wow. So that's how you turn on, well, it's basically like a kill switch for the whole car. And then this is obviously a fuel pump, it, it that says in the back of my Alpha. See, it's basically an Alpha male spider. What do you think of starting the car with your two fingers? Like, it's pretty cool, you actually. Pinch to start. It's pretty cool, and if you had a friend that you really liked, you could share the starting experience. Oh, it's like a Lady in the Tramp starting. Oh. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <Aww. laughs> um, anyway, no, this is so cool. I love just the sip, like insane interior, carbon fiber everywhere, Alcantara trim, stitching the whole thing, and then a racing steering wheel because it's based on a race car. I mean, it feels pretty bare bones race car in here. It is. It's, it's beautifully done. I mean, the, the, the decision to do the ridging and the Alcantara's, yeah. it's kind of really paid off. No, it's really nice. And I, I love the, I kind of love the emblem. What a fun emblem. It is. It feels like they, they sat there and like, okay, what animal can represent our brand? And it's like, choose the one that mixes them all together. It's the tutti frutti of mythological animals. <laughs> I don't, a, I don't want to trivialize it. Yeah, it's a, it's, what is it? It's a lion ram eagle. Lion ram eagle? Yeah. I like it. I dig it. Yeah. Um, anyway, look no, at No, it's the, a lion ram, but unicorn. 
Pegasus thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, look at look at these carbon fiber stocks. You know, nothing nothing cheapens a really ultra special car more than seeing the same like indicator stocks and 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 turn signal stocks that you get on like a Ford Focus. Yeah, true. Right. This is like, cool. how hard is that? It's not. This is like proprietary to the car, and it's beautiful. What's it like driving it with uh, gauges that work? <laughs> yeah, you only had a tack on your little information yes, screen yes. down there, right? You know, it is it is really, really cool. It, it feels like there's so... I don't think I've ever driven a car where so much happens in one gear, right? It's Yeah, it's very involving. It is really, really It is involving. not easy to drive. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, it is not. It, it's funny, is that you probably already told everyone about this, but this transmission, which is based off obviously the R8 and the Gyro, doesn't feel anything like that transmission. No. I literally just used it, and it is totally different. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Yeah, that one was a bit more relaxed. This. Yes, it was very much. Anyway, I love that it has proper six point harnesses if you need them. Um, I, d I don't know what more to say about this. There's actually not a lot to talk in here. Obviously, we've got all our accessory gauges because. This is the type of car where you want to monitor yes. what's happening I, in your I, highly strung engine. For some reason, I find the fact that it has CarPlay amazing. It's great, isn't it? Because in, in a way, it proves that all we ever needed was air conditioning and CarPlay. Air conditioning and CarPlay and, and, and basically a classic sports car plus. The rest is fluff. Yeah. And this ain't got no fluff. <laughs> Okay, maybe some fluff is good, like the fluff that's airbag shaped, for example, which this doesn't have. But as far as the Evo 37 goes, in our minds, it highlighted exactly what a resto mod could and should be. Stunning from every angle, comfortable, fast, raw, engaging, and yet modern tech, all without shoving a million stuck on screens in your face. You are paying for the privilege, but what is privilege if not a one of 37 custom built rally homage from a 17th century Italian villa where you get to discuss your personalizations of your build over lunch with a suave award-winning rally driver? Sounds like a million bucks to us. Thanks for watching.